I would like to thank my Nebraska Sand Hill um, Pipeline members of Neely also and of York, Nebraska and the Native American Indians that are uh, standing beside us. Thank you also to Jane Clem. She's been the bold, giving us the direction and the reassurance that we are not alone. Also, thank you to Ed Schultz, the Ed Schultz Show, for coming to Nebraska to us, hearing us, and helping us make the nation aware of our story, and thank you everyone for being here. I'm here today speaking in half of my husband Byron Terry Stesco and our families, the past, the present, and the future generation. My husband Terry was one of the Nebraska landowners interviewed by interviewed by Ed Schultz Show using the 36 inch hula hoop to demonstrate how large in diameter and how thin the pipeline pipe would be. We have been passionate about this pipe since 2011 when the original route was on the west side of our city water and then just our luck the route changed and it went onto our land. Our 480 acre farm is located on the north east edge of the Nebraska Sand Hills. The farm soil is sandy and the Okalala Aquifer runs beneath our land. The route proposed by TransCanada would have cut through our land diagonally 1.2 miles, also crossing the beginning of the north branch of the Eagle Creek. Both Terry and I have been raised in small towns in Nebraska just 10 miles away, Atkinson and Stewart. Our parents were hardworking people. They paid their taxes, they obeyed the laws, and they laid, raised their children with good values. My father, Bob Cadwell, was a truck driver hauling such things as hay, livestock, corn, and farm equipment. My mother, Lucille, was a school teacher and a mother to three children. There were tough ch times in my family, losing our mother at a young age of 40, but we stayed strong as a, as a family. The farmland that we own now today was purchased by Terry's parents, Bill and Aldis Stesco, in 1948 on the steps of the Holt County Courthouse in O'Neill, Nebraska at the price of $5.15 an acre. Bill and Elda also had discussed about buying the property and one day Bill came home and said, Elda, I've used all of our money and we have no money for groceries. Elder, of course, said, Bill, don't worry, I have some money in the cookie jar. <laughs> At that time, they had three young girls. They raised a large garden. They had a few hogs and a small herd of cattle. So the money in the cookie jar went for the basics, coffee, flour, and sugar. They were a strong family. They made it through hard times like the drought, tornadoes, losing family members, and the blizzard of 49. Bill had rented some corn stalks and a couple of straw piles about seven miles from his homestead, and they used that for their fall grazing of their cattle. When the blizzard of 49 came in, it was fast and it stayed a few days. When the storm subsided, Bill took off walking. He walked three miles the first day to his sister's homestead and then continued the next day for four miles until he reached his cattle. They were okay, but very, very hungry. He scooped around the, the straw piles so the cattle were able to get to the food. Luckily, he only lost one cow in that blizzard, and that was due to pneumonia. During World War II, also, Bill and Elda supported the United States by buying savings bonds, as many other families in the United States. On these acres of land, they raised four children, four, five children, four daughters, and one son. They knew how to take care of their livestock and the land. They were able to provide for their family. Bill knew how important that creek was because it was a natural watering hole for his cattle. Although that Bill and Elder are gone, their ashes are spread upon this property right next to the two-story house that's still standing. In 1996, Terry took over the homestead, taking care of his folks while they continued to live there until the time of their passings. 
Terry and I were acquaintance in our young years, and in 1998, we became a family. He has treated our children, Sarah and Jake, as their own flesh and blood. In 2005, Terry decided to develop some of the grassland into farmland. But he knew without the water from the Okala Aquifer that our farm was not be able to produce corn, wheat, edible beans. As a family, we have many memories working on the farm, moving irrigation systems, fixing irrigation systems, raising Chinese ring-necked pheasants, snow sledding on the top of a car hood pulled by a four-wheeler, and both Sarah and Jacob learned how to drive an old van in our farm pastures. They come back with smiles a mile wide. During the past couple years, we have been bullied by TransCanada. They have lied to us. Their survey crews have trespassed onto our posted land. Our county attorney would not press charges. Our own Governor Heineman tried selling the idea of a pipeline to us. And when we said no, he threatened to send out the National Guard. Our homestead has survived some dry years, floods, earthquakes, earthquakes, and tornadoes. But also, it has endured some hard times, like losing family members. We lost our son in 2008, suddenly at the age of 18. But I know he is right here with us, protecting our land and our water. ranchers, Native Americans of the United States have endured hard times throughout the years, but we will prevail, passing our homesteads onto the next generation, the future generation, our children.